Um, good afternoon and welcome to the ZEOSC Symposium 2021 session on EOSC engagement and coordination mechanisms uh, with focus on uh, national initiatives. Uh, just let me move my slides. Um, I just remind you that the event is recorded and uh, the recording and the presentation will be shared with all the participants. Uh, I encourage you to post your questions uh, in the Zoom chat. Uh, as you have probably seen, we have a quite packed agenda for this session, so we will try to answer as much as possible your questions in the chat. But of course, I mean, you can also use the raise button of Zoom to ask your questions uh, or, or early. Um, let's have a look at the agenda. Uh, so my name is Sara Garavelli. I'm from CSC at the Center for Science uh, in Finland. And today I'm representing the EOS Secretariat project. For those not familiar with the, with the project, the EOS Secretariat in the past two years have been supporting the EOS governance and the working groups with the, the provision of Secretariat support, but also with the delivery of some, a series of studies. And today I will give you an overview of one of the latest studies that the project is conducting. After my presentation, we have invited the 5B regional project NIFOS Europe to give a presentation about the models that they are developing for the setup of national open science cloud initiatives, but also to give us an overview and a perspective from the Southeast European region. The main part of the session will be dedicated to a panel, and we have invited eight uh, um, representatives from European countries. A couple of words about the EOS Secretariat study. The study is about on um, EOS coordination and engagement mechanisms at national level. We started a couple of months ago uh, in April, and we are planning to deliver the study by the end of September. Uh, the study has four main objectives. Uh, so it will provide a mapping of the existing, but also the emerging uh, EOS coordination and engagement mechanisms at national level, and we are really aiming at covering all the European member states and associated countries. It will describe best practices, main challenges and benefits of such mechanisms, and it will reflect on what could be the role of these mechanisms in the whole EOSC ecosystem. Uh, the study will also provide recommendations on how to improve the EOSC engagement at national but also European level. In terms of methodology, what we have done in, in the past two months was to identify country uh, contact points for each country. And actually, we are still uh, doing that for some of the countries at the moment. And we did that with the support of the regional projects, but also the EOSC steering board that, that I would like to thank both. Uh, we have developed a template to collect the information about the countries, and we are also performing some interviews. Once we will have all the information available, we will conduct an analysis. And then after the validation of all the different countries, we will publish the study. And we are also thinking about organizing uh, an event uh, um, around early October with all the countries present, possibly. Um, the study is really meant uh, to be used as an input for the future work of the EOS governance. As you know, the the EOSC Association is setting up a task force on researchers' engagement and adoption, so we think that the study can provide some insights for them, but also for the subgroups uh, sub of the steering board. The study can also be seen as a sort of blueprint for European countries that are willing to set up uh, um, coordination mechanisms, and also as a reference document for the all EOS communities, because through the study, all the stakeholders um, will be able to better understand who are the national actors active on EOSC in their country. Where are we now with the study? So we have received so far contributions from 11 countries and are the countries highlighted in blue on the map. And we are in contact with other 20 countries. There are all those in yellow on, on the map. In contact means that either we are collecting already the information or we are still in the phase of identifying who are the, the, the contacts. Um, today, uh, as we haven't started yet the interviews with the countries from the Southeast uh, Europe, uh, we have invited the NIFOS project to give us an overview about that area. 
And out of the 11 countries, uh, eight countries were available today for the panel. So that's how we structure and we thought about the session. I will spend now a couple of minutes uh, to introduce some early results uh, of the study that can also be useful to set the scene for, for the panel discussion. So all the countries analyzed so far, so the information that I'm giving now is really about the blue countries that you see on the map. Uh, all these countries have or are planning to set up a mechanism to coordinate EOSC activities and engagement at national level. And you can see on the map, those highlighted in green are those for which the, this coordination mechanism is already in place. The orange one are under set up or planned. Uh, I, want, I just want to remark that this might not be the general rule in Europe because we already know that the situation might be very different in all the other other countries that we haven't interviewed yet. Uh, we have asked the blue countries uh, what were the main reasons for the establishment of, of such coordination mechanisms. And there is a common agreement that the main motivation for their existence is the coordination of the country position within EOSC. Coordination uh, has different meanings in different countries. It can mean like putting forward the EOSC advice on a country level or coordinating the national participation into the EOS governance, or also more aligning initiatives related to EOSC at national level to best contribute to the EOSC development and implementation. A third driver that has been highlighted by almost all the countries is the need to increase engagement into EOSC at national level, both from the perspective of the community but also in terms of strengthening engagement and of national policy and decision makers. Uh, beside these common aspects, the different countries are tailoring the objectives uh, or the national coordination mechanism to the specific needs of the country. And this is why the mechanisms have different uh, specialties. For example, enabling the mandated organization to represent the collective in national interest in EOS governance, or steering and supporting the national priorities and investments, coordinating scientific and technical infrastructures, or also setting up competence centers and organizing training courses on open science. Different countries have also different coordination mechanisms and three main patterns have been identified. Some countries are leveraging on coordination groups, in many cases steered by the ministry, in other countries, uh, consortia are the most uh, popular mechanism, and a few of them have also, are also considering national programs. Only in few cases, uh, the coordination mechanism corresponds to the mandated organization into the EOSC association. More structured approach uh, are present, especially for the countries where there is a consortia or a national program, and these uh, approach are regulated via MOUs or collaboration agreements. The direct involvement of the EOSC association members and steering board representatives is not the rule, but a very common practice. In the majority of the cases, the coordination mechanisms involve all the stakeholders from the country, from research perform organizations, service providers, and research funding organizations. Finally, only in few cases, the coordination mechanism is supported by public funds. In terms of duties, uh, these coordination mechanisms are mainly focusing on consultation, organization of consultation consultation and alignment activities, and in most cases, uh, this coordination is aimed at identifying the specific responsibilities uh, of the different actors in, in the country. Organization of engagement and support activities for the national stakeholders, and as we have already seen before, they are also taking care about training, provision of incentives to increase engagement in EOSC, and also landscaping and monitoring activities. Finally, and this is my last slide, uh, we asked the countries to reflect on the success factors for the EOSC engagement at national level. And key aspects have emerged, like the need of strong commitment at all levels, including the political level, the involvement of key players, and in some countries, the engagement of universities is really a challenge. 
Uh, many countries have highlighted that it's very important and equal participation, uh, equal participation opportunities for all organizations in the country, a clear understanding of role, roles and responsibilities, financial support, also enabling policies and regulations, uh, in particular uh, potentially aligned with international policies to avoid duplication of efforts and good communication channels. And of course, uh, some more general requirements have emerged uh, that are those that I think we also heard this morning in the chat. So a better and clear value proposition and awareness of the advantages to adhere to EOSC, a clear sustainability plan, quality of data and services and their interoperability, and also development of competencies and skills. So this slide closed my presentation. Uh, for the sake of time, I would like now to introduce the next presentation. In the meantime, I will check uh, the chat to see if there are any questions, and I will try to answer them directly. And eventually, we can pick up some of the questions right after the next presentation. So I'm pleased then to, uh, to introduce the next speaker. That is Eleni Tolli from Athena Research Center. Eleni is the project director of the NIFOS Europe project. Eleni, please. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Sarah. Uh, not only for your introduction, but also for the work that we will be doing in the next month. Uh, this, uh, this monitoring activity, this landscaping activity, I believe it's something that is again very much needed. And we really look forward to to hearing more from you and the results of this activity. So I will be talking today about uh, the, some, some first uh, outcomes of our related activity, which is setting up uh, developing models for, uh, for uh, national open science cloud initiatives and our first efforts in order to set up this, uh, this initiative. So NIFOS Europe uh, is, is a project, is one of the implementation, the regional implementation projects and uh, actually being the biggest one uh, of, uh, of the infra EOSC 5B. We have uh, 22 partners that cover 15 uh, uh, member states and associated countries, and uh, not only Southeast Europe, but also Western Balkans and uh, the South Caucasus region. So uh, it brings together two domains uh, that are the building blocks of the EOSC partnership, not only for, of our project, but also of the EOSC partnership. Uh, it is uh, the service and infrastructure providers from, from our region, having the major players in our project, and uh, also the open science network through the uh, national open access desks of uh, open air. We have a very high level of diversity and maturity, not in terms of uh, project representatives, but also in terms of uh, almost all aspects that concern uh, the establishment of uh, uh, open science policies and um, consequently also EOSC in, in this region. Uh, as you can see also from, from this map here. Uh, I believe it was Kostas Glinos who mentioned uh, earlier this morning that uh, we now have to move quickly from uh, prototyping to operationalizing EOSC. And uh, this is uh, what we aim to do with the NOSCI structures, with the National Open Sounds Cloud initiatives uh, we propose. And uh, for making uh, this work, for making this uh, work in such a diversified areas, we, uh, we decided that uh, what is needed is a model that one can work and also provide the modular solutions. So uh, when we started working on this, we realized that we need the common ground of understanding. And that's why we came up with uh, a definition of what a NOSCI is. Uh, it, it's, it's actually not the name that each initiative will, uh, will acquire or will have, but it's, it, NOSCI stands more for the role that initiatives play in the country. For example, the national initiative uh, in, in Serbia is called TONUS, but it, the role it, it, it plays is that it connects all the ecosystem, all the stakeholders and the research ecosystem in the country, to, uh, to develop aspects related not only to EOS governance, they will, uh, at the end of the day, support EOS governance, but uh, they will support all aspects of, uh, of fair and open in the country. Um, we developed a blueprint 
Uh, and this is how we started this uh, modeling activity. Our blueprint consists of uh, three parts. The indicators that help uh, the monitoring of the process, the workflows that support the actual setup, and the operational aspects that have to be taken into account also during uh, the operation of the national initiative. For making also the work, the, the, the work easier for the people who have really to work on the ground and implement this, we created some, some easy to use checklists which uh, someone can, uh, can consult. So, uh, based on the work that we have done until now and the co all the, the landscaping activity we performed and also the, uh, the contacts and the discussions and interviews with our partners, but also other stakeholders from our region, uh, we identified uh, these three major uh, setting up options and you can consider them actually is a summary of the of the clustering uh, that uh, Sarah also presented uh, in, in her presentation about uh, what are the existing coordination uh, efforts uh, in uh, in several European uh, countries. Uh, here you can see all the elements uh, that we have identified in our model. You can uh, read more about this model also in our Zenodo community. And also we have developed a related video where you can see how these elements uh, can, be, uh, can be combined to each other. Uh, what is important to keep here is that uh, um, the clusters, how the clusters and the elements within the clusters will be combined. This very much depends on the setup options that have been chosen by the particular country. For example, you will follow a very a different approach and will have a different uh, uh, um, different um, first steps and priorities if you have a bottom-up approach or if you have a top-down approach where the ministry or a related uh, authority, national authority, actually asks you to set up this initiative or to do this work uh, in, in your country. Uh, what does the modular approach mean uh, uh, exactly in our country? This is for in, in our region. This is what you can see here. You can see here a, a, a snapshot of uh, where we are now in the NIFOS Europe countries. Uh, you will see that uh, uh, these are the steps uh, based on the clusters I have uh, presented earlier. Uh, and in green, uh, these are the steps that uh, have been already undertaken uh, in, in the countries. Uh, all countries, uh, in all countries, uh, the, the parts of the identification of the national stakeholders and the engagement with them and also the EOS liaison have taken place. But in all other aspects, you see that each country is, it's up to each country and the national uh, players and stakeholders uh, to set their own uh, working priorities. Uh, in summary, in our region, uh, this is, uh, this is uh, where we stand now. So the important figure here, I believe we should uh, keep, is that out of the 15 countries uh, in, uh, covered by NIFOS Europe, we are in the process of either setting up a national uh, open science cloud initiative or are actually also quite advanced in this process in 13. So uh, we believe it's, it's something that can have a, a really high impact on, uh, on, on, on uh, supporting the EOS governance and inclusion also at the regional level. So some uh, very first findings of our work and conclusions uh, also uh, through the modeling activity, but also through the interviews and discussions we had uh, with people from, from our region. Inclusiveness is uh, very important to make, this, uh, to make this effort successful. You have to make sure that all the people who deal with these aspects in the country are really part of this initiative or at least uh, uh, are not excluded. Uh, choosing a bottom-up approach uh, is, uh, includes a my, much higher degree of uh, uncertainty. We have wit witnessed this in several countries uh, and uh, uh, it's something uh, that you, can, uh, you, you cannot always predict what the next steps will be. 
And uh, a very important, uh, two very important questions uh, that have been also raised by several of our partners is what is the relation between this national initiative and the development of the open science strategy? And what is the relation between the national initiative and the mandated organization? Let me start with the second one. Uh, even uh, uh, as also Sarah showed, uh, um, in, in many cases, uh, the national initiatives don't have a legal form uh, that, uh, that allows them to be uh, part of the association. In this case, an MOU can be an option, uh, but also if there is a, a mandated organization, if, if it has been already appointed, this, may, this doesn't, doesn't mean that it makes a national open science cloud initiative obsolete. Uh, I believe the slide that Sarah showed with all the options and the, and the aspects that, have been to, that, uh, that uh, are important at the national level are exactly the ones that uh, this initiative should deal with. Also, all implementation and engagement aspects at the uh, national level. And uh, even if a country decides not to even mandate an organization at this stage, the role of Open Science Cloud initiatives uh, are even more important in order to really stress this importance and, uh, and uh, work towards this, uh, this direction. Um, several of our countries do not have a national open science strategy or are, are in the phase of, the developing, of developing it or updating it. Uh, it has been uh, it, 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 it is uh, it has been uh, reported by several partners of ours that uh, it was uh, very useful the fact that we set up this process in the country in order also to push more on aspects related to open science uh, strategies and to be closely involved also with uh, actors with other actors or officials who are working on this. So also in this respect, whether a national strategy exists or not, uh, the existence of a national initiative that uh, really fosters all these aspects is really, is really important. So this was a very quick uh, run through our activities. Uh, here you can find more information if you, if you want to check our related work. Uh, you can visit our Zenodo community and our YouTube channel to see the checklists, the model, but also uh, the video on how to uh, combine the elements uh, for setting up national open science cloud initiatives. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Eleni, uh, for your presentation, very, very clear. Um, so I was checking the chat. I think there were just a couple of questions in relation to um, the study uh, about the the different uh, um, pro the different countries uh, and I just wanted to confirm that indeed uh, I mean all the countries uh, will be covered by the uh, the study so those that you have seen in gray it's because we haven't approached them and actually I want to invite if we have uh, uh, people in the room that are from a gray country or also from a yellow country and you have already maybe some information about uh, your national situation just uh, feel free to contact me. I think we can pick one question for you from Francois. Um, your initiatives prepare a, a, an MOU even when they are top down, Eleni? Um, we, we are in the process of drafting these MOUs, and uh, it is true that uh, not all, all MOUs reflect the same collaboration. Uh, collaboration mechanism or way of collaborating. For example, in Greece, uh, we are working on an MOU and are discussing this. It has started by uh, the National Task Force of Open Science. And now, so it, 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 would, it would be uh, an MOU between the open science actors in our country. But uh, what we would like to do now, and we are in the process of, uh, of, uh, of working on this and uh, making this a reality, is to also include uh, the, the, the national authority that is responsible for science and innovation in the country. So for us, having also their participation would be a signal that uh, these, uh, the open science policies are really endorsed in our country. We will not uh, uh, we will not stop or this will not hinder us of uh, 
further working on these aspects if they do not they don't sign the MOU. But currently, uh, this is this is what we have been discussing within the task force that it would be important to have them also on board. Okay, thank you very much, Eleni. Uh, I just want to pick up one comment in the chat uh, from Fortis uh, that uh, is also informing us that there is an IRG white paper coming soon entitled Good Practices of Coordination Within and Across Infrastructures and Thematic Research Infrastructures. So thanks for the information, Fortis. I think this would be very relevant. So thanks again, Eleni. I think it's time to move to the panel. Just let me share uh, my screen so you... You can see the list of panelists and so I'm pleased to invite Thomas Nadenmark, a policy officer at the Open Science Unit in the Director General for Research and Innovation of the European Commission um, as a chair to the panel. Thomas uh, is working in the EU team and has since 2019 provided support to the EOS governance board and from this year also to the EOS steering board and Thomas I want to give the floor to you. Thank you very much, uh, Sarah. Thank you also, Eleni, all for the interesting presentations on the study and the NIFAS uh, development. Uh, this is uh, obviously very, very valuable and will be a great contribution to, to our um, work. Also from the EOSC steering board, of course, which you heard this morning from Costas is an, a new expert group starting this year to uh, organize the, the, and uh, align all the efforts by the countries and the commission together. So I'm very happy that uh, so many, eight out of the 11 countries who responded to the, the study uh, could join this panel today. And uh, the focus of this panel um, is to discuss how the countries drill down a little more on the different countries, how are they getting organized in terms of EOS coordination, and engagement in the respective country. Um, for this part of the session, uh, we have a little more than one hour. I assume we are already ahead of schedule, actually. So uh, I think we have lots more than one hour. Uh, maybe we'll uh, find a close wrap up around 20 past three. So if you have just joined the session, please be aware this is a recorded session also. And I would to stress that the audience participants is very much welcome. I'll try to follow the chat. And there was great uh, activity in the chat this morning, and I hope this will continue, of course. And there will also be a Slido poll at the very end of the session where we really ask for your contributions. If we, um, during the panel, don't answer the, the, all the questions, and I invite also the panelists to, to answer questions uh, uh, along the way here in the chat. Uh, if this doesn't happen, anyways, this will be taken into consideration by the EOSC uh, uh, secretariat somehow uh, to the ongoing study or uh, in the report. So we will organize the panel as follows. In the first round, I will invite each country representative to provide a lightning talk for four minutes. And then um, uh, following also the topics that we have heard by, by Sarah. And in the second round, uh, if we have time, we look forward to uh, some shorter answers by the panelists, where also the audience uh, is welcome to respond and contribute, of course. Um, so uh, again, welcome to the panel, and uh, I would like to welcome the panelists now. So when I do this, I ask panelists to turn on their cameras, and this way, all 262 participants will see if I pronounce your names right or wrong. First, um, I'll, I'll do this in an alphabetic order from the last name. So first is Sofia Abramsson uh, from Sweden. She's a senior uh, research officer. Uh, I don't see your camera, but it's not. Maybe someone else does. Uh, hey. <laughs> At the Swedish Research Council, where she's a leader uh, on the organization's engagement in the EOSC Association. The Swedish Research Council is the Swedish mandated organization and has set up a national reference group for the EOSC in Sweden, integrated into the organization's government assignment of coordinating open access to research data in Sweden. Very welcome. Next uh, panelist is Volker Beckmann uh, from France. He's responsible from the, uh, for the coordination of EOSC in France at the French Ministry of Higher Education, Research and Innovation. 
And in this uh, role, he prepares uh, uh, the creation of the French National EOSC Coordination Committee, and he represents France in the EOSC Steering Board. For the next two years, he will also represent the interest of the EU member states and associated countries at the EOSC Partnership Board, um, which will start very soon this month, soon. Next panelist is Ignacio Blanquier. I hope I, I pronounced it okay. He's full professor at the Universitat Politecnica de Valencia and advisor of the Spanish Ministry of Science of Innovation in the area of EOSC, coordinator of the Spanish Network for E-Science and member of the board of directors of the EOSC Association. He's also uh, the Spanish delegate in the E-Infrastructures Reflection Group. Next speaker is uh, uh, panelist is Paolo Budroni. Uh, he follows the EOSC building process from a different point of view, trying to create some synergetic effects as head of EOSC and the International Liaison Office at the, at the Technical University of Vienna Library at local institutional level. And as coordinator of the Austrian EOSC mandated organization, the EOSC Support Office Austria at national level. And as chair of the e-infrastructure reflection group at supranational level. Next speaker is Ludic uh, Matiska, professor at Masurak, Masaryk University and senior researcher at CESNET, uh, representing CESNET, the Czech mandate organization in the EOSC Association. He's also representative of the Czech EOSC coordination platform. And uh, we have three panelists left now to present. And next one is uh, Henrika Mustajoki from Finland, Head of Development of the National Open Science. And uh, Henrika follows the EOSC developments with the view of engaging the community in EOSC and aligning national policy and monitoring with EOSC activities. She's also um, a chair of CONOSC, the Council for National Open Science Coordination, and uh, the, uh, the EOSC Finnish Forum coordinating committee representative. Peter Pelz from Germany is professor at the Technische University of Darmstadt, Darmstadt and deputy spokesperson for the National Research Data Infrastructure for Engineering Sciences, the NFDI for Inc. And last but not least, we have um, uh, Federica Tanlongo from GAR on the panel. Uh, Federica is uh, the National Research and Education Network. This is the Nas <laughs> National Research and Education Network in Italy, and uh, part of the e Executive Board of Italian Computing and Data Infrastructure. This is the ICDI. ICDI was appointed as a mandated organization in Italy, and uh, GAR is representing it while it is incorporated as an independent legal entity. In ICDI, Federica focuses on the engagement of relevant stakeholders. So welcome to all panelists. I, I don't see anyone uh, complaining too much about how I, I pronounce your names. Thank you for, for that. Uh, I hope that we can go now directly to the national examples of coordination initiatives. Um, I take it the two, the, the, the signs in the chat are not questions. So for the first round of questions, I would like to invite you to a short lightning talk. We will have four minutes um, uh, each on this one. So the first question uh, um, would be uh, that this, hearing about the study from, from Sarah, we see that uh, three coordination mechanisms was, uh, were highlighted. So if we, drill down to some more complex examples, we, I would like to look at Austria, Germany, and Sweden. So I ask you to briefly for four minutes to describe the model adopted in your country and explain why you came to this choice in your country. And uh, I hope it's okay, we first invite uh, Paolo Bodrone to present the Austrian model for four minutes. The floor is yours, Paolo. Thank you, thank you very much, Thomas. So we, we are in Austria, we have a very close link to, well, I mean, with the EOSC, within the EOSC initiatives with the ministry, and of course with the national NRN. So the ministry asked the NRN to help 
um, to ignite the process of the EU's building process in the mandated organization. The, the Austrian NRN are connected then um, helped uh, to, from the legal point of view, to uh, initiate. Then afterwards, we decided to build up a consortium of members and observers, and uh, this is the difference to the EOSC Association, all other initiatives that are relevant for uh, uh, EOSC, like for example, the, the FAIR initiative, to include also them in the joint effort. And this is a short difference. But <clears throat> what we do is just mirroring the EOSC Association in Brussels, also in the terminology, and then uh, copy it and break it down at the national level with some slight differences. So we have also a memorandum of understanding. We also have uh, reference points at uh, the participating institutions. We built uh, uh, working groups, like for example, one working group on KPI and so on, or continuous monitoring uh, working group, uh, or a fair data stewardship and so on. Then uh, we also have a physical office, which is based uh, at one of the members, the TUVIN, um, offering, of course, services for the whole association. Uh, they, where are the differences to the EOSC Association? <clears throat> we decided to build up also a group, which is called the Reflection Group, which is some kind of thinking out of the box, uh, gathering um, um, some kind of intelligence there, from within the partnership and from external point, from the external point of view. This is something which is not new. We are uh, doing it since more than four years, uh, but now we institutionalized it, codified it uh, inside of the EOSC mandated organization, so the reflection group. And uh, this gives us the possibility to approach other uh, entities like the funders, for example. So the funders are represented in the, this uh, uh, reflection group. We call it EOS Cafe. Um, I'd also like to state that we are um, stressing the three missions of the universities. The three missions, uh, first one is education, second is research, th third is the third mission. And an expression of this is also our members. So we have uh, members which are strongly devoted to the education, others to research, of course, but uh, also the third mission. So, for example, the National History um, Museum is also a member of the association and is part uh, of this uh, joint effort. And uh, the last... Uh, um, my last um, introducing sentence is uh, um, we decided to initiate uh, this all with a rotatory system. So we are uh, on a rotation in the, in the, the management board so that uh, partners, members are uh, um, given the possibility to be part of the board of, uh, of the management board on a regular basis. So I thank you very much. This was my introductory statement. Thank, thank you very much, Paolo. I, uh, I immediately have a, a follow-up questions because this is so interesting and I don't see anything in the chat right now, but maybe we should continue with uh, all the countries and we take a wrap up with um, comments afterwards. So can I please invite uh, Peter uh, Peltz to, to four minutes to uh, elaborate on, on the German example here. Yes, thank you. Thank you, you yours, Peter. Thanks very much, Thomas. Um, as you noticed, I'm a, I'm a normal professor, I'm an engineer, and it's, we heard about top-down and bottom-up. In Germany, it is a combination of top-down and bottom-up. First, it was set the goal to have an open science paradigm in the future and to share data. That was the, the goal which was um, formulated by, by politicians, and then um, the national program NFDI was started with 80 million euros um, per annum spent um, for fostering um, fair data and open science. And now it comes to the, to the bottom-up approach. So the, the money was, is spent and will be spent and the goal was set, but the bottom-up approach was then that in a competition of different consortia, they can apply to raise the money to get the funding in a, in a quite um, 
in a quite competition of the different consortia. And the consortia they formed out of um, life science, out of humanities, they formed out of um, natural science and engineering science, mathematics, and so on. So that was not defined, but the consortia has to find themselves and organize themselves. And um, now in the first round, roughly 10 consortia are funded. Now the second round has just started and an additionally um, roughly in the order of magnitude of 10 consortia. And at the very end, the order of magnitude of the consortia, roughly 30 consortia should be funded. And that is the program which started. The, the different consortia, they are how they organize themselves, uh, that is pretty much up to themselves. And a nice picture of that process is like the crystallization process in a, in a Petri dish. So we have this uh, crystallization course and thinking as a, as a scientist, we have then a spreading of ideas, a spreading of technologies and fostering solutions. I think we can bring it down to three points every consortia is looking for. The first is providing trading and ensuring data literacy right from the beginning. So it has not only to do with infrastructure, but changing the mindset. And we are doing this in the NFTE um, if how, so there is a, there's a club, so, so formed, and we are collaborating in this NFTE overall um, 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 head. The second one is technology solutions and methods. And the third goal is data governance and curation of data. So this, this three goals is, is pretty much the same for all the consortia and we are discussing and exchanging ideas and solutions. It is a complicated process as Thomas said it is. I think the nice thing about it is that is a combination of top down and bottom up. And we are really aiming for changing the mindset of researchers from the very beginning, from the first term, young people enter universities. And this mind change in mindset is, I think, very much reached when we have it from the top down approach, from the bottom up approach. Thank you. Thank you very much, Peter. Um, it immediately comes to mind how much this huge top down contribution, the financial. Uh, starting point um, have what kind of impact it has on the on the mindset set and the tools to work on the culture, which is uh, we'll come back to the culture, of course. But let me first, um, um, uh, as a third third uh, lightning talk on this topic, invite Sofia from Sweden. Is it okay, Sofia? The floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Thomas. Um, well, we established a national reference group on EOSC in Sweden when uh, the Swedish Research Council was nominated to be the mandated organization in the EOSC Association. And uh, the group met for the first time ahead of the General Assembly last year. And the incentive for setting the group up was uh, mainly to enable us to represent the national interests in the association. And we saw uh, a great value of uh, establishing this group in order so to create a forum and to give opportunities to discuss and exchange information about uh, activities and uh, to facilitate a discussion on the priorities for EOSC engagement um, by the national stakeholders. The uh, EOSC uh, reference group involves all national member uh, organizations of the association, which are currently eight organizations uh, consisting of two research funding organizations, including ourselves, and six research performing organizations, of which one is also a service provider. And uh, with the setup of uh, the EOSC task forces, the, the, this group is likely to grow. Um, 
given that the group has representatives who are engaged across different levels of EOSC in the association and with connections um, to the steering board, it also allows uh, an information exchange on the discussions taking place within different levels of um, the EOS governance. Um, I just also want to note here that we also see great uh, synergies between our uh, engagement on EOSC and on our national work on open access. And I'll just sidetrack there for, for a moment to, to just give some short background. But the Swedish Research uh, Council has since uh, 2017 a uh, government assignment to coordinate the national work of uh, transitioning to open access and research data, uh, which has a national goal of implementation by 2026. And our engagement in EOSC is to a great extent based on the opportunities for an increased coordination on issues of open access and, and FAIR in our national and international work. So to facilitate this alignment, the, the National EOSC Reference Group has therefore also been integrated into a larger reference group, which we have on open access to research data and EOSC. Um, the scope of this larger group is to discuss the broader issues uh, that are uh, relevant to the open access uh, mm -hmm. ecosystem. Um, we have aimed to involve uh, the main national stakeholder organizations in these groups. And in addition to the EOSC member organizations, um, in the larger reference group, we have representation of the open uh, research data landscape, including funders, infrastructures, universities, researchers, and other public agencies. Um, and I think it's important here also to mention the Association of Swedish Higher Education Institutions in this context, as they add another layer to the coordination of EOSC and they do an, an amazing job uh, in coordinating the engagement of uh, the higher education institutions. But beyond our reference groups, uh, examples of other stakeholders with whom we already consult include uh, agencies responsible for the coordination of closely related areas like open access to publications and public sector data, and that is the National Library and the Agency for Digital Government. Uh, but we are also considering how we can better reach out to the researcher community for, for whom this work needs to be useful. So I look forward to hearing more about this in today's session. Thank you very much, Sophia. You will hear more about it, uh, but you will also need to say more about it because you have a very interesting presentation, you too. If I may uh, start, are we, okay. Um, I see that uh, our time is, uh, uh, um, we're not, we're a little late. Sorry, so Sophia, can I start with asking a question to you uh, on this topic uh, immediately? Uh, where's the ministry in this uh, part? We heard Paolo having uh, reached out to the ministry and I will ask him also a follow-up question. What was the success factors? Well, how did he bring the ministry on board, starting with the Yos Cafe? Well, uh, but in the coordination group of yours, it's amazing that you connect with the uh, higher education institutions in Sweden too. I know because I'm Swedish, I know that they also have an EOSC group. But um, so who else um, uh, can be coordinated? Or, or is the ministry in this group of yours or the broader represent, uh, reference network? Um, I'm the, uh, the ministry is not directly involved in the coordination group. So they, they sit. Uh, we have a, the representative of uh, the Ministry of Education and, and Research is sitting, is the um, uh, representative for Sweden in the steering board. We have a link uh, to the steering board through, uh, uh, through the deputy representative in the steering board, who is also chairing our reference group. Um, and uh, is a representative of the Swedish Research Council. Yeah. Okay, so that enables, uh, to us that enables the link of communication on, on what's going on within the steering board and uh, 
um, the discussions taking place in the reference group. Yeah, this is a good solution in the ESC team, but then we see that for many countries that we have the ministry and an expert uh, agency um, uh, participating. Uh, Paolo, can I, can I turn to you here? Uh, I think, is it, a, is it a good thing to have the ministries on board uh, in the coordination? And how, how, can you just elaborate a little on um, why the US Cafe was an attractive uh, platform to, to start reach out also to funders? Um, yes, of course, thank you. So as I mentioned, uh, it's an initiative that was born before we started the, the preparation of the EOSC launch. And uh, we decided at that time to uh, create an interministerial informal group. That's, that's the point, it's an informal group. And being an informal group, then um, you don't uh, really to, to, be, to be formal, official. Huh? So th this way um, we could gather uh, three ministries around the table, which are the Ministry of Infrastructures, the Ministry of Digitization, and uh, the Ministry, of course, of Science and Education. And uh, we believe it's a, it's, a, it's a game changer to have the, the ministries uh, in plural on, on board, because uh, uh, any kind of input coming from the European Commission asking for uh, other questions, for other um, topics, like, for example, high performance computing, quantum computing, whatever, uh, we can then discuss it in an informal way there and then ask the experts to, to give some opinions, which are then distilled, which are then screened and then refined by the, by the ministries, uh, which uh, receive the, the, the question by the commission. So this is something that we, ex uh, this exercise is something we have done the last four, four and a half years. And we believe it's a, it's a good idea to have the, uh, them on board from the from the US point of view, and I believe it's also good for the uh, from their point of view to have the universities uh, the, the counterpart there. Sounds like a wonderful win-win situation. Yeah, and uh, I, I will move on very soon to the next question. Uh, but first, Peter, uh, the the there are different starting points here. The the huge amount of money that uh, was invested in Germany. Uh, what did it really mean for you to set up these uh, objectives and uh, uh, does it, uh, do you think that also improves the, the re uh, receptivity uh, when it comes to changing the culture towards EOSC? Yes, um, thanks for that question. I'm, <clears throat> it, was, it was quite interesting being part of that process. Um, um, and as researchers, we are trained to collaborate, and this is our task to 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 speak with other colleagues. But usually, we are we are focused in in our own university, our own surrounding. And with that NFDI initiative, it it forces us uh, to speak with colleagues all over Germany, and now here on a European level, and that is very much. Um, that fostering this dialogue um, that is very interesting and very inspiring at the same time. On the other side, it's, it's a quite complex process. It's quite simple to meet here in Darmstadt with a colleague to, to, for a coffee, but it's, it's much harder to meet all over Germany with colleagues and not at only university in NFDI, it's Fraunhofer, it's Helmholtz, so all the other research institutes, it's not only university, but all the others. And from the engineering perspective, the, the connection to industry is most important as well. But that is also for, for life science. So the dialogue with other stakeholders, not only in the academic surrounding. So it is inspiring, it is nice, and it fosters the dialogue, but it's complex, uh, I must say, on the other side. And we are not at the end, so we are just starting. Yeah, we are just starting, so we will see how it ends. Well, all the best luck to you on this route. So, um, I would like to go to the question two. And uh, you know, in many countries, the national coordination mechanisms are tightly knit to the open access and open science programs, and uh, is meant to guide future investments. So we turn now to uh, countries, uh, uh, France, Finland, and the uh, Czech Republic. 
uh, from this point of view. So Folke, uh, would you please take the floor and present the case of France for um, three or four minutes? Thank you. Yes, thanks, uh, Thomas, for this, this opportunity. So, so in France, we, we have been engaged very strongly into open science and to making, making this happen and engaging into that. Uh, so, for example, we have for several years already, we have a committee for open science on the national level. So there the, the ministry invites directly the directors and presidents of the relevant actors in science and research. And these, this group decides the main guidelines and decides the main lines, what should happen uh, with respect to open science in France. This uh, committee then calls for participation by the real colleagues, the real workers in the laboratories and universities, and they really do the work then and they, they develop the recommendations and provide this as a guideline then for investment and for uh, advice uh, how to structure um, the, the, the research landscape in France. So in parallel to this, we are now setting up a committee for digital services and infrastructures. So that's under this committee, we will have the national coordination mechanism. That's a, we call this a collège, where we have as uh, representatives, the, the members, the French members of the EOS association, plus the ministry. So also here, the idea is that we, we develop advice from the users, from the providers directly. And then we also provide advice on who should be the mandated member. And we, we hand this over to this uh, committee where, where you have all the, the presidents and directors plus the ministries. Uh, and this, of course, has then a direct influence on financing because we, we listen very carefully to the, the advice there. And we align our investments on the national level to open science and now also to EOS. So in parallel to this, we, are, we have a national plan for open science. Uh, that's from 2018. We are in the process of updating this. So, and again, also including already in the first version, we had uh, the EOSC uh, included, but now with new action points on the EOSC. And I hope that we, we publish this by the, by the end of the year. So we have a top-down approach, which then enables the colleagues to say, okay, this is interesting for me. I want to participate directly there. And the infrastructures for research are in there and the, and the universities. As, as partners, especially also for, for training the next generation. And I think this for us works very well. And of course, uh, the, the colleagues in the laboratories and the universities look for the financing aspect very strongly uh, if, we, if we are able to align really the investment with our policies. That's Thank it. Thank you. Thank you, Folke. It sounds like a very strong coordination structure for the policy making. So we'll see more EASC-oriented uh, policies um, in the future. Is that so? Well, we, we have, to, I mean, as I said, so, so we set this up now, the structure, and then we invite the, the members of the EOS association to, to work with us in the, in the structure. And based on that, there will be recommendations. I cannot say what the, what the, the partners are going to recommend there. But uh, I, I'm quite sure that, that, we, that they will want to put in place very strong policies and, and recommendations. Sure, we are moving in the right direction. It's amazing. So, um, and Henrika from Finland, can I invite you to take the floor, please? Thank you very much, Thomas. And, and thank you for the invitation to, to share. Um, Finland has got one of the advantages over the other presenters of being a very small country. Um, which means that we actually have an open science coordination that's very much um, community owned and community led. The ministry um, asked the research community to take over the open science policy making about three years ago. And since then we've created this very co-creative process where we've got hundreds of members from the research community to write the national policies. We've got a national declaration on open science, valid till 25. We have this May produced our first um, national policy on open data. And um, alongside with this, with the steering group, 
The Finnish um, organization CSC, which is currently the only Finnish member in EOSC, has been a member of the National Open Science and Research Steering Group. So we've had close links. And, and before the association was formed in Finland, we informally had very close um, group of all um, actors involved in EOSC meeting regularly under the umbrella of the, the National Open Science Coordination. And we exchanged views and, and made sure all our policies lined up. Since the, the forming of the association, we um, started a, a EOSC Finnish forum in that the ministry is now involved, CSC, the Open Science Coordination, the Academy of Finland, they're the founding members. And the way we've got the, the Finnish um, EOSC forum set up is that they report to the National Open Science Steering Group to make sure we align our national policies with EOSC work. And what we've got coming up is, for example, we're starting a, a new updating process for the National Open Science Infrastructure, and we look to have more and more engagement in relation to EOSC on that. We're working very heavily on National Open Science monitoring protocols, and they again, we are um, kind of predicting of what EOSC might be, have in, in that regard and trying to anticipate and be involved in, in on those activities. The EOSC Finland Forum at the moment, we, we're developing the activities that we're going to focus on. The membership is um, one that anyone can choose to join. So it's not a mandated organizational membership, they're individual members. We're very much looking to reach out to the research community and to, to industry to try to get as broad membership as possible. Um, the EOSC Finnish Forum is organizing webinars, there's a lot of communication activities, and when needed, that is the place where the Finnish voice and the ideas of, of related to EOSC and, and the development of EOSC Association will be discussed and agreed. So I think we've, we've got um, the alignment of things, of the national policy making and the EOSC work at the moment in really nice unison and, and, and kind of synergy happening and we're developing activities with the full view of what's happening in Europe and what's happening national simultaneously. Thank you. Thank you very much, Enrique. This is, uh, sounds very, very, very good and strong. Um, so um, a very practical question. This, I, I'm so interested in these open science monitoring protocols. Uh, will they be developed uh, fair and open by design for others to learn from? <laughs> that is <laughs> definitely you... the plan. <laughs> we have so... <laughs> a, existing um, kind of data collecting practices uh, provided by the ministry. And we're adding on open science elements and indicators into that now. Um, and the idea is that it's all openly available, both the indicators and the results, yes. Amazing, we have an example of walk the talk. Great, thank you very much. Um, I think we will need to uh, move on a little to um, uh, Ludic and Matuska. Would you like to share the ex uh, example of uh, uh, your country, please, Czechia? Thank you. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon, thank you for allowing me to be here. With you, I mean, the situation in the Czech Republic was for quite some time, the open science activities were practically uniquely related to the open access activities. And the country already set up kind of an environment for taking care of this with the ministry on one side, supporting and, and funding and coordinating by the National Technical University, uh, Technical Library and uh, with the collaboration with uh, universities and Academy of Science and other research uh, organizations, but mainly the universities. And the open data activities in our country were for quite some time more related to the public data. I mean, the data produced by government and municipalities and not directly aligned with the research. Only in the recent times, I mean, I would say the, and I think that EOSC helped, the European EOSC activities helped there very much. The focus was being moved to the uh, research data as well. And uh, there was a kind of a political decision that in the next funding period, which will start on 23 
the EOSC Open Science funding should focus on research data. And the ministry, which is responsible for actually making sure that this happens in a, in a best way for the country, asked and created a national platform for EOSC with representatives from the universities, Academy of Science and other research organizations to actually discuss how we would like to implement EOSC within the country and how we would like to say deploy the future plant funding for building the uh, data infrastructure within the country aligned with the EOSC activities. Uh, currently, we are practically uh, finished the what we call a big picture, which means what we would like to build, that we would like to build a real national data infrastructure based on some national repository platform uh, complemented by the uh, thematic area uh, repositories and data uh, uh, environments related to uh, especially those areas where there is already existing activities usually around large uh, research infrastructures and uh, the current activities are that if this general picture the big picture will be approved we will start autumn this year in fact creating a consortia that will actually apply for the funding in this next period and implement this idea on which we agreed during the first half of this of this year and uh, a very important role here is played by the e infra cz this is the unique e infrastructure of the national uh, of the czech republic which is expected to somehow lead and help to coordinate the data infrastructure as well but the idea is to extend much wider scope of players stakeholders more universities more institutes of academy of science to actually make sure that we are covering the whole research within the country, not only the, the central part or not only focused on some specific uh, thematic service. So it is in a kind of a hybrid approach from the ministry, which is say which took the decision together at the government level to provide the funding and asking the experts and the representatives of the institutions to come out with the best proposal how the EOS should be implemented within the country. Thank you very much, Ludek. Very, very interesting uh, uh, example. Uh, I, I'm looking at the chat. I discreetly get some messages about the time. Uh, you don't see them. Uh, but are there any questions at this point? I see that uh, uh, NFTI was addressed uh, in the chat. Uh, maybe if Peter wants to answer that, maybe you can look at it and perhaps answer in the chat. Otherwise, we pick it up later. Uh, but I think we should. Uh, continue and finalize our uh, national talks, lightning talks here, if you agree. Um, so uh, in Italy and Spain, particularly, there's, there's a lot of focus on the coordination of national infrastructures and, and building bridges to the, the, the high performance computing, HPC. Would you like to share some uh, some insights, some details uh, on this aspect? And I, uh, if uh, you allow me, I will um, give the floor to Ignacio uh, first for three or four minutes. Thank you. Welcome. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you for the opportunity to be here representing the initiative that we have in Spain. So let me first explain a bit what's the reason of this this point. So we have a top-down organization with respect to the network and net, the net Spanish Network for Science, which is an initiative that has been uh, created by the Ministry of Science or mandated by the Ministry of Science of Innovation uh, through the units of internationalization and the unit of unique infrastructures with the idea of, of putting together of, uh, I would say, a, 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 a coordination, but not a strong coordination of different uh, dimensions of different networks of different organizations that are contributing to this. One, one is, I mean, one part is the, the infrastructure related part and the other parts are uh, open science, uh, but all of them represent strongly the users. So the point is that the part of the infrastructure was better organized due to the past uh, experience and it was very well organized in the level of sharing the, the, the resources with different kinds of policies and of course, of gathering uh, the user and attracting the users who are also 
providing uh, a high level of uh, high level of, of value through the data that they are gathering. So this um, good organization in terms of the sustainability, the terms of um, of connecting with the user community it was that make that this part is more visible, but it's not, as we say, the only part, not only the HPC are the data distributed uh, processing are the, the only part that com that form this, this concept of the EOC. So what I, what I will say is that um, these collaborations uh, are being taking place in the frame of this national uh, Spanish network for science and we, we have all the dimension that we benefit from all the experience that these other parts have brought to the to the to the yeah to the network thank, thank you very much uh, a, a quick question that i perhaps didn't follow uh, perfectly in the beginning uh, and w w the ministry is involved in this network too can you please confirm yeah that's that's the point i mean the the ministry is Part is also um, chairing uh, these two units that I mentioned, yeah. chairing the Spanish Network for Science. This is a very good point because we have, on one side, we have uh, researchers and we have um, and the funders. And then, uh, I'm, for example, in this case, I'm, I share the, all the opinions and I share the messages with the ministry. So I know that I have a wider um, support to the message that I am transmitting and also that mm -hmm. we have the means to to disseminate the, all the messages through a wide range of, of users and the real community. Thank you very much. Very good. Okay. So can I let now Federica Talongo, if I say it right, I'm sorry, to take the floor. Thank you. Welcome, Federica. Thank you, Thomas. You, you said it correctly. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not easy. <laughs> So, uh, well, uh, what Ignacio just said is very interesting uh, because uh, they look like they are, they are uh, uh, really the opposite of our situation because our initiative started uh, some two years, two years and a half ago as a group of people uh, from the research infrastructures and the infrastructures who felt that we needed more coordination in our country about uh, the participation uh, to data, but also computing uh, activities uh, at the national and uh, uh, European level. So uh, we are very, very uh, bottom up and uh, we were born very informal. Then uh, uh, the initiative was framed uh, into a more formal uh, agreement. Uh, and uh, uh, since then, uh, we have been engaging uh, with the ministry and the ministries, plural, as uh, Paolo said before. Uh, but these two components, uh, the research infrastructures and the e-infrastructures, stuck with us uh, from that moment on. And uh, I think that they shaped us uh, very much. So on one hand, uh, we see that uh, uh, EOSC is something uh, which is strongly rooted uh, in the scientific communities, uh, their specificities uh, and interactions. And, uh, and so we believe that not a down solution would work, uh, at least according to our uh, experience. And so we strive uh, uh, for uh, EOSC uh, to remain very much uh, uh, community driven uh, in our country and not only there. Um, and probably this comes from uh, one of the two spirits uh, we brought with us, uh, which is the one of the infrastructures. For instance, uh, at GAR, all the design and planning uh, we do is always uh, with the users um, and so probably we we brought this uh, also in uh, the initiative uh, on the other end uh, uh, we also uh, strongly believe that we can't build the data layer without the layers below and that's why uh, we we focus very much on this on the hard part of the yes, let's say uh, we believe that the infrastructure and competencies uh, connected to the infrastructure should remain with the research community. So I think this is, uh, when, when I talk uh, with other uh, initiatives, I think that is uh, quite a specificity for, uh, for us. Also, 
but I see that uh, we are not completely alone in this, uh, which is good. So when it comes to computing, uh, which was one of the, the points you mentioned, uh, uh, we, yeah, we are working on uh, coordination uh, on HPC, and also, but also this means uh, high throughput too. And uh, we have also interesting experiences uh, with hybrid architectures uh, um, among uh, some of our uh, partners especially uh, in view of um, AI and uh, machine learning uh, oriented architectures. Uh, at this time, uh, what we are doing uh, is that the infrastructure components in ICDIs are, are working uh, towards uh, a more efficient use of the part of the recovery funds uh, that will be invested uh, on computing uh, and uh, network, but also with an eye on the future. Uh, so um, on future uh, quantum computing uh, activities uh, that uh, will very soon uh, enter the picture. And uh, uh, my last point is that uh, um, this thing that uh, uh, we, we were born uh, bottom up uh, also stick in the way we are organized uh, because uh, uh, the coordination and cross-fertilization uh, cross activities uh, we are carrying out uh, are organized uh, into task forces, uh, both on the soft and dark topics. Uh, and so uh, we ensure that the people who were there from the start and uh, who are actually contributing uh, on uh, the evolution of these aspects uh, are there. And I think it's all for the presentation. <laughs> Thank you very much, Federica. It's a very good presentation. Uh, I um, have immediately a question coming to mind and uh, how to widen it. Uh, this Because your task is, of course, to reach out to stakeholders. So what disciplines do, do you cover? You're focused on the hard uh, part of the EOSC you mentioned. And, uh, and also how, how do, you, uh, do you include uh, the question that I've been coming back to since I... Uh, work closely with the EOSC steering board, of course, uh, the ministry and the top-down perspective. What are the connections and the success factors here? Well, it, it is, uh, it depends very much on the stakeholder. Um, for the ministries, uh, for instance, uh, uh, each has uh, its own story. So the, the Ministry of Research followed us uh, when we started as uh, an informal uh, working group uh, and they were involved uh, as an observer. They stuck with us uh, uh, notwithstanding the fact that we changed uh, at least a couple of ministers uh, from when we started. Uh, but they were quite consistent and um, we managed to, to contribute to the draft of the um, Open Science uh, Ministerial Plan uh, that um, is bound to be published soon. So ICDI experts uh, were involved uh, as uh, contributors there. For other ministries, uh, we started later when uh, uh, they realized uh, that of course, uh, Italy is quite a complex environment because uh, it's not just the Ministry of Research that funds uh, uh, research activities. Uh, so we, we started to engage uh, with others as well. Uh, for instance, the Ministry of, uh, of Health, which is a very important uh, research funder uh, for, uh, for our country. And uh, they seem to be quite interested uh, in what we do, especially uh, because of the um, training and advocacy component. So we are confident uh, that this would be one of the key factors uh, for involving uh, both the, the decision makers uh, and the other stakeholders. And uh, that's why uh, at this stage uh, we are working uh, very hard uh, to, to put together a national competence center uh, on um, the IOSCA and uh, open science in general. We already started with some, uh, some activities, uh, but the full potential uh, is not yet there. But we hope uh, it will be there uh, in the next year or so.
Thank you very much. Thank you. Sounds promising. Um, obviously, these uh, coordination efforts are, are very valuable and uh, important. And um, I want to take this um, panel now to the next set of um, questions. There will be not so many questions, though, because we have uh, not so much time left. I look at the chat. Is there anything I'm, I'm missing here now for, for this first round? Uh, I see a Roman Gelash asked the question about the NFDI uh, act as the mandated liaison to the EOSC for Germany. And I, I guess the answer is yes. Uh, isn't that so, Peter? Um, not, not yet. At the moment, it's the not yet. German, German Science Foundation, the DFG, but it will be. It will be in the near future. So, and, and that was answered by Sophie Kraft already. Ah, all right. Ah, oh, there it is, Sophie. Sorry. Thank you, Sophie. Um, da, 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 da. Claudia has asked something. Let's see. Uh, to um, Ignacio, a national contact point for the infrastructure in Spain, are organizing an event to inform the Spanish community about the possibilities of EOSC. Have you participated of, in similar events? What has been the feedback from your community? And then there's a link to a document that we will not read at this moment. But do you have a very short and uh, nice answer here, Ignacio? Oh, yes. Well, actually, uh, that's one of the, the points that I was trying to, to address before. I mean, there are many initiatives that are being, uh, that are part to build the, the whole uh, dimensions of, of the UC and all these communities are organizing their own meetings and having this network is, is a, a very good, it was a very good uh, opportunity to coordinate and make the information available. But I mean, there are some of them in which we are aware we are not directly involved and uh, we look forward to coordinate more, well, not coordinate because we, we have to give the, the freedom of organization, but try to interact and provide the, the the message and the help that can be done. So that's a, uh, it's nice to, to, to hear, Jim. Thank you, Ignacio. Um, Frank Panista just asked a question here. Uh, JISC put together a webinar focused on the ESC. I received the a number of people. Thank you for the information. Um, I, I don't see exactly the question here. So if, if it is, please uh, let me, Frank. Uh, but I, now I will move on um, to the next uh, question. I will ask you now to formulate um, in one sentence, what in, you, what in your opinion is the main added value brought to the EOSC ecosystem by your national coordination mechanism? Um, you of course uh, can uh, target the value for your country or for the EOSC governance or for the EOSC community. Uh, at large, but in, in, if you can, in one sentence, what would be the main added value? And I would like to start, I will try to write at the same time. Uh, can I start with Austria? Thank you very much. <clears throat> well, our contribution is, um, we are building up some kind of corporate behavior to EOSC. Um, it's a hard endeavor, it's a hard work, uh, and uh, our message is we are partner. We are partner for the European uh, uh, counterparts uh, in any kind of project. So this is our um, added value. Thank you very much, uh, Paolo. Um, very good. Um, check, yeah. Okay. I mean, I would say that the major added value for us is actually bringing all the players, I would say, together around the same table uh, with trying to achieve the same goal, which from our perspective is to deal properly with research data. I mean, when we are focusing especially on the fair data of the whole EOSC uh, activities and on this to become a reliable and strong partner to the European activities uh, through our own vision which we hope will be shared by at least majority of the researchers. So that the major added value for the national coordination, that the people really starting to discuss what they expect from EOSC and not as something which is 
induced by some decision in Brussels, but something which can really help them with their own research. And that's what we are trying to achieve uh, with this national EOS coordination. Thank you. Very, very important. And we are now in the second phase of the EOSC, which you all know from the EOSC roadmap and other, all other documents, that we are now entering into the stakeholder driven part of the EOSC. From the main have been, in, been driven together with the Commission earlier. But now, so this is a, a very, very good um, uh, message. Uh, can I invite Finland to take the floor, please? Thank you very much. Um... I think the, the one word would be alignment. Um, a lot of EOSC is national investment. That's one thing we need to align our, our aims. But at the same time, the alignment between the, so that the users and the policies and the infrastructures all work towards the same shared goal. And um, considering the, the, the diversity within research and within countries, that the national coordinating activities are an essential part of that aligning process. Thank you. There's um, added value to the ecosystem. I uh, agree. Uh, France, please. Yes, thank you. So you said one sentence. You didn't say how long this sentence should be. So <laughs> EOS you benefits. You see we are flexible here. <laughs> yes, yes. So I, I think EOS benefits both on the European level and in France from this strong French coordination effort, which then helps communicating the requirements the colleagues who are working in research have, and which then also implies an alignment of funding mechanisms with the Open Science in general and with the EOSC. Thank you. There were some and in that long sentence, but it's perfectly fine. Important message. Uh, Germany. Yeah, the strong con contribution is a change of mindset. And if I look at EOS, is, it is also a bottom-up approach and we don't have to change direction. We are coming from bottom up from the researcher and ending up at EOS. So we don't have to change direction. Thank you very much. Uh, Italy. Yeah, so uh, for me, it's you know, to boldly go where no man or woman has gone before, uh, in the sense that uh, EOSC uh, uh, as a central approach uh, cannot simply reach uh, where we can reach uh, in our country and we can act as a multiplier and uh, an accelerator to the uptake of uh, the EOSC environment. Multiply and accelerate the uptake of the ESC environment. Very, very good. Thank you. Um, you see, I don't disagree with any one of you. I, from what I've heard, it sounds really good. Okay, so can I ask uh, Ignacio, please? So what is the added value now from your setting in Spain? I think that bringing together the multidisciplinarity of the whole, I mean, to address this complex problem is the main and the main thing that we can provide. Thank you, very, very, very good. Uh, Sweden is the last one in this round. Please, uh, Sofia. I, I think to start from the very basics, it's uh, extremely valuable to just have that forum to share information and discuss, and this in turn helps us coming to a better understanding of the views and priorities of all national stakeholders so everyone gets their views heard. And, uh, and then I said on the next level, it's uh, just incredibly useful to have this opportunity uh, to, to, to find the joint um, uh, con consensus and alignment, uh, which is positive both for the implementation and for the finding a stronger voice in uh, EOS governance. Yes, great, thank you. It seems like uh, yeah, there's a common theme here cutting across all the presentations about making the voices heard. Uh, no one is disagreeing with that. That seems important, right? It is. Uh, so uh, can I also at this point invite the audience, um, what, from what you have heard now from the different presentations, lightnings, and the different countries here, 
what, what, what in your view, the, uh, the added value that this scanner should bring to the EOSC uh, ecosystem? And uh, you can, of course, target uh, the country of yours or, um, uh, or something uh, else. Please, if you may contribute in the chat, uh, we'll not pick it up and uh, force you to, to answer for it, just contribute. Um, and I see now that it's uh, 15 minutes past three uh, here in Brussels. And I want to turn to also question five, perhaps, um, or perhaps we start moving closer to the closure of this panel because we only have 10 minutes left now. Um, we are on extra time now. So to, do, to wrap up this session, and please continue engaging in the chat. It will all be picked up and uh, uh, carefully uh, considered later. Um, maybe we can suggest to wrap up the session together. So I would like to, sh uh, to all of you to share your main takeaway from this session. And I always like to go from a meeting with a concrete action point. What will you do? What will you bring from this session? Uh, that you or your, uh, you're a we, uh, perhaps uh, me, uh, the commission, the, the countries, etc., the EOSC secretariat. What can we do to move EOSC forward in your country? Is the question of, yeah, ba, ba, ba. no, not the question. Can we see? So we will see the question if you follow this link. Is that uh, correct, uh, Sarah? Ah, oh, there it is. Great. Yes. Yeah, so, I, okay, I say the question here. Please share with us your main takeaway from the session and any potential follow-up action that you or we should do, could do, or should do, uh, to move EOS forward in your country. And while we are waiting for some uh, champions to start uh, answering the slider questions, can I also make a tour de tab among the panelists uh, to answer this question. So we start again with uh, Paolo in Austria. So thank you again, uh, Thomas. Um, I, I believe um, the strengthening of the human factor is uh, needed. Uh, EOSC is uh, not a cloud made in Brussels. It's about people working, experts working on uh, together and the strengthening the human factor is more, more important than uh, the technological part. So um, that's why we mentioned the corporate behavior. So this is something that uh, Brussels could help and send uh, as a message on how to strengthen the human factor in the EUSC. Thank you, Paolo. Uh, federating uh, people. Uh, so Czechia, please. I mean, I'm just writing it to the Slido. For me, it's different perspective to achieve the same goal. I mean, it, it's really interesting to see how we are differently organizing to at, at the country level. And I think that this, for at least for me, it is a very major takeaway to, to actually look to things from a different perspective than just the more narrow based on the legacy from a single country. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, please uh, add it to the, to the Slido uh, uh, in addition to what you say here. Um, can I invite Finland, please? Thank you very much. I guess I have a quite a practical one. I think I'm going to um, familiar, familiarize myself more with um, our neighboring Sweden who have succeeded in, in great engagement of research performing organizations directly with EOSC, something we aspire to, um, have not yet achieved. So I look forward to learning more um, from the Swedish approach on a more very practical level. Thank you. Sounds very, very um, good. It's, uh, we all, We'll learn. I, from the commission perspective, will dive deep into what you have talked about here, of course, to learn more. It's um, very, very promising. So, France, please, Volker. Yes, I think we talked about communication. I think it's very important to, to have mm -hmm. a uh, look at the research infrastructures 
both on the national level, but also on the EOS governance level, because they cannot be directly, in most cases, directly be represented as members in the EOS association. So we have to make sure that their requirements, their needs, their wishes are properly communicated and that they have a driving seat also in the EOS there. And that's, that's something I think where we have to align activities on the national and at the EOS governance, EOS association level. Thank you, Volker. Um, Peter, Germany. I liked it very much. I think the, the difference is a strength. The difference approach of the different countries is a strength and this is needed to exchange the ideas, but also technologies and solutions. Um, for um, Henrika, the open science monitoring, I would be interested in, the, in that as well. That is very practical as well. So exchanging ideas and solutions. Yes, and this is the, a, a beautiful uh, side effect or the very purpose of this panel too. <laughs> very good. I see also in the chat that uh, uh, um, following up on the KPI metrics uh, of the ESC Association partnership uh, is important also. Uh, very good. Uh, can I now, we have uh, three uh, panelists left and uh, five minutes. Italy, please. So yeah, uh, the more I talk with other national initiatives uh, and the more I see the need uh, and the, the space to exchange experiences because it is always, always uh, inspiring uh, to compare. And I think that somehow uh, to this moment, uh, we lack a space like this uh, and uh, we need to build it. Thank you. Yes, it's inspiring to compare, the inspiring to do open science. It's inspiring to walk the talk and be open and collaborative like this, right? Uh, Spain, please. Well, I mean, I think that one of the most important things that I take from this, this specific session is to know all the people that are involved are doing exactly, I mean, the same goal as, as Ludek say, with different approaches and Knowing each other, I think, will be very helpful for the future and sharing our experience, I think, will be, as my colleagues have said, very, very enriching. I agree. And the study will be a very, very important um, document for this. It will be uh, public in September, I, I understand. Uh, Sweden. I think my, my main takeaway from this session is uh, that uh, success is in the engagement over all levels of the data ecosystem. And our focus has uh, very much been on establishing a forum for the major key players, which is essential. But I think there are more opportunities to engage the researcher community who are, after all, uh, the end users and producers of the data. So we've uh, learned a lot from the examples uh, today, and I think we can practically use these as an inspiration to um, practically engage the broader community. Thank you, Sophia. It's very, very nice that you finalize this to the tab with focusing on the researchers. The, the very purpose why we are doing this, right? It's the researchers. Um, can I now look, uh, I will try and look at the Slido. Uh, what can, I haven't seen, it's 23 responses in Slido. And uh, uh, can I ask uh, perhaps Sarah to help us if we should pick up something that has not been reflected by the panelists? Yeah, I mean, actually, I, just, I wanted to say that I think that more or less the audience is echoing what the panelists have just said and uh, actually I mean I think for the sake of time we will look into the Slido answers later on and they will be picked up in in our study uh, for sure. Um, I wanted to add a comment to what you all just said so I've heard in many contexts saying that for example the S freeze or the thematic domains are mini EOSC I do also think that the national dimension is a sort of mini EOSC as well. So I think that if we manage to coordinate things so at so national level, this could be just a good example and good input for the European context. So I really see another value in what all you are doing. 
that's what I wanted to add, Thomas. Yeah. Very, very good uh, contribution, Sarah. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you all for having engaged. It's amazing how, how productive uh, one hour and one and a half hour panel can be. So thank you all to panelists for your contributions and in particular, the work you are doing in your countries. This is the, the main thing. And sharing it like this, sharing it in, in other ways in the future will be super important and also looking at involving as many as possible because we still have, we need to, I'm sorry to say it, we need still have communication tasks ahead of us. We need to reach out, make people understand. In the future, maybe researchers will not understand when they use EOSC and the EOSC services, but at this point, we need to engage the, the stakeholders and the universities, the research performing organizations, funders, and see the policy um, uh, driving staff also to be involved in your networks. Thank you so much. And thank you, Sarah Garavelli, for setting up the session and supporting us in, plan in the planning of the session. It has been a tremendous help to, to me and, uh, and uh, the panelists, of course. Uh, so thank you, EASC Secretariat and the EASC Association for a great day of this uh, symposium, this year's symposium. I'm looking forward to it. We have one session after this one, I guess, with uh, regional projects. That will be super interesting to see. But now I will let log out. Thank you very much. Yeah, and thank you very much to you, Thomas, for the excellent coordination of, uh, of the panel. And thanks again to the panelists, uh, their very cool background. So thank you very much also for that. <laughs> and uh, thanks to the regional project uh, again. And now I'm passing the floor to Rob, I guess, uh, for introducing the next session.